Hi and welcome back to a new video. I often take you with me, show you some of our new product developments, new products such as the Intel Micro Direct Dial and also the Intel Upgrade Heat Spreader, which we launched uh, several weeks ago and a few weeks ago, maybe like one or two weeks ago. It went actually on sale and in the meantime, a few people already received their units for testing. And then yesterday and today, we received a few emails and also saw forum posts about products not meeting the expectations, meaning that some of them did not reach a temperature that was expected. So it was running much warmer than expected, which also surprised me, not only the customer, and that's obviously not satisfying for both sides. So I spent the entire yesterday and also today trying to figure out what is going on and what's maybe wrong. Um, the progress is a little bit mixed because so far I'm yeah, not quite sure what actually is the problem. But I want to take you with me today to show you some part of the product development, what we're doing to trying to narrow it down and also how we're handling the entire issue. So today is a Friday for me. Yesterday on Thursday, I saw the first post on overclock.net and then also received um, like a second email regarding the same type of issue that was reporting about 10 degrees Celsius higher than with the stock Intel heat spreader, which should not be the case. It's not like it doesn't work at all, but the temperatures are far away from what is expected. And that's obviously not satisfying. And that's why I directly said, okay, we have to do something about it. Uh, we were obviously offering refunds. Um, we will allow customers to return the product. That's no problem at all. It's also only a small fraction of coolers and heat spreaders that left the shop so far. We're talking about uh, 50 heat spreaders and uh, 50 water coolers. So it's only a small amount of people that's affected still. I want you to be aware that if you bought one of those products, please double check if the temperatures are as expected and if there's any kind of issue reach out to us directly. We will try to find a solution. Um, like if it's bad, directly refund, no problem whatsoever. I'm interested to solve this as easy as possible and then also find the root cause for this, which seems not to be that simple. Here we have a test setup that I was running with the Apex Encore motherboard with a 4900KS, deleted with upgrade heat spreader and on top the Corsair H150i as an AIO. And what I want to show you with this is that, at least to me, the height of the IHS should be okay because the imprint of thermal paste, at least with this AIO, looks really good. So as you can see here, the imprint of thermal paste on top of the IHS is definitely sufficient. It's pretty thin, so I'm confident that this is not part of the problem. What I want to show with this is that both heat spreader and micro water cooler, they share the same structure underneath. So the base part is the same. It's exactly the same uh, CNC uh, program tooling path that is running for both parts. That also means that if the heat spreader has an issue, automatically also the water cooler has an issue because it's basically the same part, only that the water cooler has fins milled in on the second stage and the heat spreader is just a diamond cut, diamond milled. Uh, and in the second phase. It's identical to the AM5 water cooler. It's the same procedure. It always means that both are identical. I also want to say sorry for the entire problem. So if you're affected by this, definitely not my intention. I want you to have a good uh, experience, a good product. So uh, very sorry about this if I disappointed anyone um, with this product. And um, yeah, just trying my best to solve this as easy as possible for you. And now let's just jump to manufacturing downstairs so I can show you part of um, how it's made and then, yeah, what we did so far to narrow down the problem. We are now on the ground floor and that's also the area where we do CAD, CAM, all kind of development work, measurement, uh, quality checks and also the production area, area. So I'm just going to go to the next room where we have the CNC mills. This is one of our Datron machines, uh, the MX Cube, one of our latest machines that we have. And just as an example, because it's exactly the same manufacturing process, uh, that you can see the manufacturing of the AM5 heat spreader or water cooler parts, because as I said, they share uh, the, exact same, the exact same structure on the bottom. This is uh, five times four pieces, so 20 in total. So those could be either uh, water coolers or heat spreaders in the end. 
And it's, uh, it's exactly the same thing for the Intel part. So uh, they both share the same underside and they're made exactly the same way on the same machine. I can also show you some other parts uh, if you're interested in machinery especially. So those are parts, aluminum parts that have already been milled and anodized. These are Intel deliters and in pretty much the last step prior to packaging uh, they're being laser engraved on the machine right here and that's where we just yeah, where before so that's the data dynamics tube where we we're making the some of the copper parts for the water block if we would move on uh, sorry for the chaos uh, this was not really a planned video so yeah we have more data machines here for other parts for example this one is making aluminium and right now uh, just the usual intercontact frames it's again plate material that's being milled so 56 pieces at once again one room next to it these are the undersides that we just saw in the other MX Cube CNC machine and once they are done they go over to our 5-axis machine which is a Hermle C22U and this is mainly used for making the top part for example this one and this would also be one of the maybe affected batches of the Intel Micro that has an issue maybe with the bottom structure if we ever find out what exactly is the issue and so yeah the top side will be made here and also the slotting so the actual structure for the cooling this is how it would look afterwards that would be the intel uh, pro version so you can see the very tiny fin structure yeah that's being milled into the the copper pieces now the thing is during production we have multiple measurement and quality gates that we have implemented to actually avoid this kind of situation so um, yeah you take one of those uh, copper pieces and then we put it underneath the Kians LMX which is a multi-sensor measurement unit machine whatever and this is so we can automatically measure everything so not only height differences but also evenness on the parts and we do that for uh, the water coolers we do it for the contact frames and we always take a, a certain percentage out of the plate that we're milling for example for the contact frame uh, we have 50 pieces and we take each corner and one in the center and then we check if those are correct and then we assume that the rest is also correct so we put it on here and it's being automatically measured and here we have the measurement program which we make ourselves where we define which kind of uh, distance is relevant or so let's say the distance between uh, the contact surface and also the ring around it or like the evenness even of, of the surface is measured so all of that is automatically measured we have the table um, the chart table on the side where all the dimensions are present and also uh, what kind of tolerance the heat spreader and water cooler they have to solve different uh, challenges so First of all, obviously the cooling has to be good, which is pretty simple. You have to have a contact surface that pushes onto the chip and somehow dissipates the heat. At the same time, you want the heat spreader or water cooler to press the CPU into the socket, both in the chip contact area and also in the ring around it. So the ring around pushes the CPU on the PCB into the socket to make sure that it has sufficient contact, for example, for PCIe or for memory, otherwise, you might lose memory sticks or you might lose memory frequency. Those are the typical effects if something there is off when it comes uh, to the dimension itself. And then there's the question if you want to limit the amount of pressure that the cooler can initiate onto the CPU. For example, Iceman, that's also a direct die cooling product, they have the limit on the PCB. So you can torque down the CPU cooling block until it hits basically the PCB. And we decided that we want to keep the cooler or the heat spreader a little bit higher and have the limitation of the plastic socket. So chip contact surface, we have the ring around it that pushes on the PCB and also the entire area around will be the area that pushes onto the plastic socket here and this way limits the mounting height because otherwise if you choose to have the limitation on the PCB that would mean that the cooler would potentially end on the memory lanes right here which would then probably negatively impact uh, memory frequency that's why we wanted to keep a gap between the PCB and the cooler and decided to go with the, the plastic height of the socket as, as a height limitation. And here I want to show a few examples of uh, different development steps that we had in between. So it's not like we just make one structure and then it's uh, good to go for mass production. We have a lot of different uh, things that we test. For example here, uh, different slotting width and like slotting length here, uh, different um, channels in between. 
And then also this one, for example, has a 3D structure on the bottom of, um, of the, the slotting. So the, yeah, the slotting tool will not go straight, but it will go up and down. So it's more like a, a, a 3D structure that you can maybe see a little bit. So we tested a lot of different stuff, but the, the point I'm, I want to make is that all of them, they share the same underside, all of them. Also including the IHS, also two different uh, revisions uh, where we uh, changed different uh, things on the top side, uh, different dimensions, and um, also, so if we want to check if those are working, and I'm pretty sure this is the same stuff that uh, Gamers Nexus uses for the pressure test. For example, when he mounts coolers to see how even the pressure is, I think we use exactly the same. So this paper is pressure sensitive. It means we can put it in between the CPU and the cooler, for example, and this way figure out if the, the contact is there. So here you can see the contact to the die definitely is there. You can see contact to the PCB is also there. And also in the corner, you can see those small imprints that are getting red. And those are the imprints of the plastic corners. You can see, if you tighten it down, it definitely has yeah, contact to all the relevant parts. And these parts are not the only parts we made. I think we made between like 50 and 20 different uh, revisions of different structures to check what is uh, giving us the best performance. And all of these share pretty much the same base structure. Obviously the first few, we did first the changes to see um, the base structure, what we should adjust when it comes to die height difference or die to PCB height. So that is the first thing we tuned and all the other parts shared the same base structure. And these 15 to 20 pieces, all of them were tested on, uh, for example, the C790 Extreme or the Apex and Core. That's also what I showed in my video and they worked fine. Um, like. That is an early revision of the water block that is not nickel plated yet. And then we have a final one that's also nickel plated. For example, this one doesn't have the, the plastic cover on the bottom yet. Uh, so all kind of different stages, we tested all of that. Uh, with different CPUs, uh, 12th gen, 13th gen, 14th gen, also measured all the CPUs. They are the same. The die height and everything of the CPUs, there is no difference between uh, 12th to 14th gen. So we made sure that all of this should be covered and the only thing I'm thinking of right now is if there is a difference in the plastic height of the socket. As far as I'm aware, there is only one version of this socket out there, so only one height of the plastic part. But if that's not the case, then this would definitely be the issue. But um, everything else, we measured so much that um, I don't really know what exactly is causing the problem. That is also part where I'm making this video um, apart from also making you aware that there is a problem with the, with the product potentially, but also maybe if anyone out there, because we're a big community of enthusiasts, if anyone has a good um, guess what it is, then please let me know in the comments down below. I will certainly read all the comments of this video as usual, but uh, I can also show you some stuff of what we measured so far, so you can also get more information. Apart from the LMX, we also have the VR6000, it's also a Keyence device, and this is like, a, it's similar to the LMX, but it's not only doing point measurements, but surface measurements, which is very helpful for any kind of surface deformation. If you want to see, for example, for contact frame development, how the CPU is warping, how a IHS is warping, if there's a die warp, or even after mounting a water block, so the cold plate to the plastic piece, you want to see if there's any kind of deformation. Here's an overview of different things we measured for micro and uh, water blocks. Uh, I mean, it's, it's not a secret that we also used uh, the Iceman for validation to check what kind of performance, what kind of dimensions they used. And um, for example, here is um, the heat spatter bottom structure. So here we have the 3D analysis where we can see, for example, we can see the, the evenness of this surface. We can see, uh, yeah, measure all kind of distances um, dimensions between the different um, parts. And with this, I can go into the profile analysis to do some measurement to check if the dimensions are exactly as expected from the CAD. So I can draw a horizontal line, for example, in the center of the, of the structure. And then we get the profile on the bottom, which then would be, for example, right here. That is the contact area. That is the contact area for the die. And then on this part right here, that is the contact area for the PCB. And this is supposed to be 0 0.30 millimeter according to CAD, and that is <laughs> more accurate than I thought, more accurate than what I measured in the German version of the video. Or if I pick this and measure to the side, that is the contact area for 
the PCB that is supposed to be 0.4 millimeters, in this case is 0.42, which is still within the tolerances. And the same I have here, for example, for the 14600K. Again, horizontal cut through the profile of the CPU. And with this, you can see that the height of the, the chip to the PCB is 0.44 millimeters. So that's the situation. And um, with this, you can see that the die height to PCB is 0.44 millimeters. And for us, the distance between the chip and the PCB contact area is 0.29. So we have about 150 micrometer of space for the chip to have sufficient pressure onto the, the cooler. And that's why it's, uh, it's, it's so weird to me that uh, there is something that's wrong, which I don't doubt. I mean, it's fine if I have any kind of nice values here, but it has to work, work for you at home, not for me here. That's exactly the point. And yeah, I'm trying to figure out what exactly is the problem, I measured everything that I could find uh, so far. I'm having a hard time to figure out what exactly the problem is. I wish it was that easy to find because then it would be very simple for me. Let's say I messed up a dimension, and then it would be very simple for me to, to simply fix that single dimension. Right now, we still have one or two things we want to try, mainly lowering the dimension outside that is pressing onto the, onto the plastic socket. Um, that's pretty much the, the only guess that we have right now to check if this improves things. Then I was also in contact with some people on overclock.net and I'm planning to just make a few prototypes and send them out to external testers and let them test it and see if this maybe solves the problem and see how we can go from here. So yeah, I wanted you to know that there could be a potential problem with these products. That's also the reason why you can't buy it obviously right now. And once I have any kind of updates, I will let you know. I hope this video was not as boring as I think. And sorry again. It's one day later. I unfortunately still didn't figure out what a problem is. I'm working on it, doing my best to figure out what is wrong to fix it for the future. If you're affected by this, as I said, please reach out to us so we can find a quick and easy solution for you. So sorry again, and uh, thanks for watching this video. See you next time. Bye-bye.